All right, so today I'm going to show you how to eliminate parasitic drain on a 2005 to 2010 Honda Odyssey and simultaneously take your power sliding doors from this to this. Basically what happens is after about 14, 15 years, something like that, the grease the factory puts in this latch uh, dries up and it gets all gummy. None of the switches are actuated properly. So the door won't close all the way or it won't close the right way. And also the computer isn't getting the proper signal from the switches. It doesn't think the door's closed. So it stays awake and you wake up in the morning, try to start your car and it's dead. So I wanna show you how to fix that today. You need piece of cardboard you don't care about it's gonna get dirty paper towels or just a clean cloth uh, that you don't mind getting greasy a magnetic light is nice and a long screwdriver flathead a shorter flathead screwdriver and then Phillips screwdriver some kind of pick I'm using a dental pick um, and then you're gonna need a socket driver and uh, an extension and a 10 millimeter socket and then some penetrating oil and some goo gone that's gonna be very useful later on and just some oil it can't be like spray silicone it can't be like WD-40 it's got to be a little heavier than that it's just some kind of oil uh, this is just three in one and then also a magnetic dish so you can put all the little pieces of metal on it that you don't want to lose Okay, and before you start tearing apart the door, turn the switch off so it doesn't accidentally close on you or something. Okay, now we're going to remove the door handle from the door so we can remove the panel. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it with the other handle. I already removed this from the driver's side. Um, it'll be kind of hard to see in here just because it's such a weird angle, but basically this clip here needs to be removed. This is what your pick is for. Um, this it's much easier removing the clip when the handle's already off. But, um, yeah, so you remove that clip, and I'll do it on the actual door. It kind of helps if you bend the handle back just slightly. Um, you can see it a little bit better then. And after you get the handle removed, I'm going to put that clip back in because it's got to be in before you can slide it back on. Okay, now we're going to remove uh, the black plastic trim. If you've got the shade built into the door, you'll have these little plastic clips up here. The, these cannot be removed without destroying them, but the good thing is it just needs to be detached on the sides. Okay, and that's good enough. You don't need it removed at the top. Next thing, just start pulling it on, like, on it like that. Bottom, start up here, that's a nice little handle. I think actually what I did for the other door is I got my long screwdriver and pried at it from the outside. to reach down in here there's a little blue connector um, you squeeze on the sides of that and it comes out okay now we need to remove this plastic shield uh, up to about here um, there's a cool trick I discovered to removing it okay, so you start just peeling it off carefully you don't want to stretch the plastic a whole lot either but what do you do, you get a knife and then 
you cut the foam. Can't really see if you're good on the bottom here, but I'll, when you get to the top, I can show you. You pull it and it stretches the weather strip uh, adhesive stuff. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's foamy. And you cut that as you're pulling it. And this leaves adhesive on both sides. I use it on the plastic and on the metal. Uh, that makes the goo gone work a lot better for the trick that I'm gonna show you when we're putting it back together. All right, that's as far as you wanna go. You don't need to remove the entire thing. That's just making it all work for yourself later. Assume that has a purpose, I won't lose it. All right, now that I'm on the top, you can see what I'm doing a little bit easier. So let's see, I'm just kind of working it for you with my knife. Oop. Cut plastic, that's not what you wanna do. Do not wanna cut the plastic. Forgot to mention, but you're probably also gonna want some painter's tape or something to hold this back, otherwise that'll get in the way. Next, you wanna start disconnecting uh, these cables. Sometimes these can be a little tricky to remove because they've been on for so long, but they come off eventually. plastic tab right here that you have to squeeze and push through. And then you want to just shove that back there. tabs that hold them on. They are not the easiest things to remove. Okay, so if you look closely at this, there's a tab on either side, and you basically have to depress both of those to remove it. Um, there's not a great way to do it, so you just kind of have to mess with it, and it'll come out eventually. Now you're going to remove these three screws. Um, these are three of the screws that hold the latches. And then come inside here and remove this screw, this screw, and this screw. I removed that one last.
looks like it would fit through that hole, but it doesn't. At least not easily. Now, make sure nothing's caught here, and then you just want to make sure it's not <laughs> latched because it's at least stuck to this bar. You won't be able to remove it. This, you can feel it back here. There's a it's the rail for the window. Go down to the bottom of it. There's a little bracket. It just slides right off the end. That'll make it a ton easier to remove this whole thing. And then you pivot this down. It's a weird angle, but it's not impossible to do. Now there's two Phillips screws you need to remove here and here. This little green clip here, push that out. And then over here, there's a tab here and here that hold it in. They make it much di more difficult to remove. But you can just pry it off there. Um, now what you want to do is remove these cables here. Um, so you flip this over, and then this thing has got these two little tabs it on then this pops out of the bracket this part um, just turn it towards you it, it turns this, this holes like slotted here and that's slotted so you have to turn it a certain way and it comes out and this Again, pops out of the bracket, and there's the latch. Okay, and as you can see, everything in here is really gummed up and it's not moving very smoothly. Um, basically what happens when the door latches, this thing moves over, and then it's supposed to actuate that, and as you can see, that's pretty sluggish. It's not moving all the way. Uh, this spring in there is supposed to pull it over like that, but it's so gummed up that the spring can't move it on its own. Um, and then that switch doesn't get actuated all the way. And it confuses the computer and it doesn't it doesn't close the door all the way and it, it stays awake and it drains your battery overnight. So, yep, we're just going to clean that up and re-oil it and we'll be good to go. All right, so what you want to do is just spray penetrating oil all over these joints everywhere you can get it uh, that moves and then you just start moving stuff around you just keep on spraying it until everything moves nice and smoothly
Then what you want to do is just start wiping off all the old grease that you can get to. You've got an air compressor. This is just a nice little extra step. You can use it to blow out all the little crevices, blow all the gunk out of those. I'm just cleaning everything out of here that I blew off, just wiping as much of the penetrating oil off that the air compressor couldn't remove. Um, the idea is just to get it nice and clean. That way it'll work really smoothly when we put it back together. Uh, as you can see, this moves a lot smoother now. That engages a switch all the way, so hopefully when you put it back together, it won't be acting up. So just want to put oil all the little pivot points, work it around, make sure it gets in there and lubricates everything really nice. All right, now we connect up the cables to the latch mechanism. First, do the one with the green tape on it. Um, that has this plastic knob thing on the end. And this is very important. Cross this, make sure you follow it up. It goes behind the green cable and then around. And then you connect the wire to this lever first. and then put the plastic part clips into there. Okay, now we just have to put on the plastic cover. This right here. What you want to do is line up those little tabs in here on the side first. Now, make sure those are still like that. And then, this. Make sure this bracket is not on the end of there because that gets in the way. Um, so take that off if it's not already off, which you should have taken it off. <laughs> makes it easier to remove this. It also makes it easier to put in. Make sure it's off. Don't lose that. And then the rail back here, bend it over as far as you can that way. And you kind of also twist it towards the front of the car and out. And then the latch mechanism, jam it behind there while you're still holding it. And then when it's behind there, it'll kind of, you know, once it's past it, it's past it and you don't have to worry about it anymore.
you want to make sure these are most of the way in but not all the way in they just need to be tight enough so that this thing won't fall off um, tight enough, most of the way make sure you can still kind of move it around that's probably too tight and you still be able to move this around quite a bit because when you put the three bolts into the back you need to be able to move it around i'll show you what i mean for now put these in And then this bracket here, it goes in like this. So if it's on the end of the rack, the rail, it's like this. This part faces towards us. This gap faces towards the front of the car. So you put it in like this, find the end of the rail, slide it on. And then once you can see the hole, and this hole right here, put the screw in, hold it in place. Slide the door in. This bolt should be tightened down all the way because it's the it's separate from this, so you, you can tighten it all the way down. tightening down these bolts any of these bolts here you want to just grip it like that otherwise if you gripped it just from the end and crank you'd probably strip it out so that's a nice little trick now you want to put these three bolts in this is why we left the two on the inside loose is because you have to still be able to move it around um, so you can grab this here you've got skinny enough fingers and then Wiggle this in. Start screwing it in. Get two like that. And then you want to tighten these ones down all the way. Before you tighten down the two inside. Now you can tighten these two down. That's that, that's in there. Now this is where the goo gun comes into play. Um, you can just get new glue and scrape this off, which you'd probably have to use goo gun for to get it completely clean. And you could, you'd put new glue on here, or you can use the goo gun to reuse this glue. I think I saw this on a forum somewhere. Uh, you just get a little bit of goo gone on a paper towel and you just dab it on here lightly. If you don't want to soak it, you just dab it on here on all the glue uh, that's left over. And then you let it sit for like 10, 15 minutes, something like that. And basically what it does is it just makes this really sticky again. Because right now that's not sticking to anything. It's, it's squishy, but it's not sticky, so that wouldn't stick to anything. So the goo gun just makes it sticky and you can reuse it as just like new glue. It's, it's really nice. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do here. First, it may not look like it's working, but believe me, if you let it sit long enough, it works. It's crazy. It just gets really sticky and it sticks right back to the metal. Okay, now this has been sitting for a while. It's pretty sticky now, so we can start putting it back on.
And before we put this all back on here and get it all buttoned up, um, we need to connect this to that plug and just make sure the window works. Doesn't need to be all the way on the door, it just needs to be hooked up to the connector. Okay, now we're ready to put the trim on. Uh, start with the door open, maybe about that much, and then you kind of angle this in towards the back, down, trim, and then you put it up. Okay, and then we put the black trim on. Kind of need to push it up, line those orange things up with our holes. Push them in. Same back here. And then we put this on. All right, now we can put the seats back in. Alright, now it's good. Okay, everything's put back together, seats are in it, door's ready to go. Let's try it out. It is now the next morning. It is sat overnight in the cold. It's now negative two outside instead of 35, so it's much, much colder and it's been unplugged all night, so if the parasitic drain is fixed, it should start right up. Yep. Okay, now let's test out the door. Make sure it switches on, and then it is this door that I fixed, so open it up first. Close is fine too, so I would say it's fixed. Apologize for how long this video ended up being, but I intended to be thorough and I wanted to cover everything start to finish that you need to do in order to fix this problem. I know it's quite a common problem in 2005 2010 Odysseys, about this old. Um, it's really been a big inconvenience for us uh, in the winter time, so. I thought I'd make a video out of it to help you guys learn how to fix it. Hope this helped and hope it didn't waste any of your time. Thanks for watching.